Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being the show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of In the Dark. Great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we have the whole situation with uh, Felix trying to, like, work up his apology to Murphy, you know, it's like, right, I wasn't here, it's kind of my sister's fault, why did I listen to my sister, but then he, you know, goes to see Murphy, but before he could go see her, which she wasn't going to come out of her cell anyway, uh, he ends up running into Sam, so now he knows, cool, 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 we super need to get Murphy out of prison, because Sam's in the same prison, because the whole thing was, at very least, she'd be okay, because Sam wasn't there, so, and I wonder, is that, like, Sam's new late, because I, I thought that was interesting, they didn't, they didn't, I guess it's like, yo, I don't know whether that's someone Sam had on the side or whatever uh, back before she got arrested or whether that's someone she met upon getting her, like, now being in prison. It's like, yo. Because uh, the moment, like, um, Felix took the phone from that lady, I felt like, oh, like, he must be taking the phone from someone else and being like, yo, Sam, get on the other side so I can talk. But it's like, no, that lady was talking to Sam. So that must be, like, her, her outside sweetie or something like that. But, you know. I hope it just I hope it's not a thing of like, oh, yeah, like she got in jail first and then you guys connect. It's probably once again, probably something from like that existed before. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, getting too caught up in that. Uh, so Felix goes to the fundraiser thing, which I'm assuming there's going to be ramifications for the fact is he kind of him, him, uh, Leslie and Max kind of bailed on it. I mean, they were there. Well, she was mainly there. Uh, he stuck around for a little bit, but because he was explaining everything that was going on. So, they he was saying that we should rob this place. And it's, you know, I think it's so interesting. Once again, I guess you can make the argument that even without Murphy around, they're always going to do some criminal-like type of stuff. That uh, Because, to be fair, it's criminal stuff for the sake of Murphy, so it's always going to be tangentially connected to Murphy. So, even when Murphy isn't around, they're still going to be committing crimes for her sake to some extent, you know? So, I think that's kind of interesting. Um... But then Felix gets an idea. They end up getting a particular car. Was it like a Rover or something like that? They all go. They're going to fall like uh, take the GPS back to that person's home and rob them blind. But it's like, yeah, this is not a smart idea. It's like, well, where else are we going to get $200,000 like that? We need to get Murphy out stat. So they go to the house. And I love that Max is like, let me handle this. And, Murf, uh, you know, Felix is like, no. Because, for one, it's my idea. He's probably also thinking, like, right, I haven't really had too much of a criminal record. Max has. And, I mean, Max has literally been the only one in that group who's been to jail. Uh, obviously, Leslie and Felix have been threatened with jail and, and everything. So, I think that's just, And, it, you know, it's like, right, I'm the one that has the extra motivation to do this for Murphy. I mean, once again... Everyone seems, they're all in this together, but it's mainly like Felix as the driving force behind it. I guess he's kind of filling that void now that Jess is going. Jess was that type of person because of the codependency of their relationship who would do any and everything. And now he's kind of filling that void and Murphy's kind of filling that void for him, you know, especially how close they've gotten. But it's just like, right, um, their dynamic has now become what it has because the absence of Jess. So... Ultimately, he puts on his sister's stockings, which has got to be the weirdest thing ever. I was like, I like, he's just kind of like, yeah, whatever about it. But like, Leslie's kind of like ill about it. And just Max is just kind of like, oh my God. Because Felix didn't even think about like, oh, there might be cameras here. I shouldn't probably walk about with my face out and about. Uh, so ultimately goes in the house. He's like pulling out paintings and stuff. Because I'm like, what are you expecting to do? Like, for one, that was never going to be a good plan. You've got all this stuff piled up in front of the stairs. Like, what are we going to do? Pile it all in the car and then what were you going to do? Drop it off somewhere and make sure you got it back before the fundraiser was up. Like, you wouldn't have had time anyway. So, he goes upstairs. He realizes whose house it is that he's breaking into. And the person that's in the house, he's like, oh, I promise I'm not going to hurt you. She's like, I'm, I'm pretty okay. I know. And he's like, well, you know, I could be armed and dangerous. And she's like... Felix, I was like, oh, fuck, it's someone who knows you, uh, it's like, oh, I thought you were, at like, she, she takes off the stock and says, like, oh, Felix, is like, yeah, Kayla, I thought you were at, uh, I thought you were, um, at, uh, call it Duke or whatever, and she was like, yeah, I graduated, I was like, oh, really, and so they proceed to get high as he explains everything about what he's doing breaking in, because she's now working for her, her uncle is some big shot in, um, he's campaigning right now. She's kind of alone with that campaign. So, 
it's like, cool, you need money? Oh my God, like you're a drug dealer now? Oh man, your friend's in prison for murder? Which immediately my brain, it's like, oh, this is going to become a thing this season, isn't it? Like Kayla and uh, Felix, because it seemed like she kind of might have a thing for him being like, oh, you know, I'm going to be in town for a while. So almost like, yo, hit me up sometime. I'm like, definitely in inkling towards that. It would be interesting if things did go that direction, especially if it's like, it causes, I mean, because Murphy and him slept together, like she never felt that way about Felix. Felix, he's quick to fall in love. Um, so it'd be interesting if something happened between Kayla and Felix and then Murphy got jealous. I, I think that'd be interesting. I, I, I would, once again, I kind of wanted them to get together last season, but obviously it was more so her and Trey. And then everything with like the complications between her and Max. Uh, so there's that. But I, I, I doubt I doubt they'll still end up together. I, I doubt they'll be together by the end of the series or not. Um, Felix or... Murphy, but Murphy, we'll see. Once again, I don't think that Darnell thing is what we think it is. I do believe, like, it's going to be, I think, now, I was thinking Max, I'm like, it's going to be Felix, isn't it? It's going to be the heart-wrenching thing that Felix is going to end up dead. Like, her, you know, her best friend's going to end up dead because of her. Like, uh, it just, it feels like it's going to be Felix. I Once again, all my money was on Max. I'm thinking it's going to be Felix. Now, like, considering everything he's kind of doing for her going above and beyond, I think it's, that's that's going to go. But I hope not, but geez, there's a good chance of it. Which would suck, because, right, uh, she thought her best uh, her bestie best friend died last uh, season. Then there's also, like, right, found out that whole situation. Then, like, right, let's not forget Tyson was her best friend, too, and he ended up murdered. So, like, it would suck if the three people that were the most important to you are no longer in your life. You know, so... But regardless, uh, she hooked Felix up, circling back. She hooked, uh, Kayla hooked Felix up with uh, the money. And it's like, yeah, my uh, uncle keeps like a whole bunch of money. And he's like, oh, you, how much you need? He's like, uh, 200000 I mean, you want to throw extra in there for me too? And she's like, okay, cool. And she seemed like, I, she had an extra stat, but I think she stacked it on top. I was wondering if she was taking a little for herself. But it's like, no. Which you're immediately like, yeah, that's going to be an issue. Those are probably, for all we know, those might be, campaign funds i'm like why would you have campaign in fit campaign funds in physical money not less like you're money laundering for someone to um someone paid you in that i don't know makes you wonder will there be any correlation between this and the paula thing maybe maybe not um but you're like yeah that uh there's no way two hundred thousand going missing isn't going to be an issue a big 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 issue hopefully i don't think kayla would admit that she um had anything to do with that, but when push comes to shove, she might not have any choice but to sell Felix out, so we'll see how that plays out, but I love that he's just like, hi, and he leaves it, hey, and you're just like, oh my god, it's like, yeah, this is so-and-so house, and Leslie's like, what? It's like, yeah, don't worry, Kayla gave me the money, it's all good, so they go back, they return the car, everything's kosher, I mean kosher, once again, it's not going to be, you know, you always gotta wait, and just waiting for that other shoe to drop, it's just a matter of time, so... That whole thing's going on. Then you have the whole thing with Murphy. Um, avoiding trying to leave. Well, picking up last episode, where exactly where the last episode left off, she held on to the drugs for Paula because it's like, right, I'm just trying to help out. I'm just trying to be friendly. And it's like, yeah, they're never going to check a blind girl. But uh, that could have gone bad. But I think they made, the fact is they made a point that Murphy feels the drugs later on, and she feels like, I think, the lightning bolt, like, design on it, so, that's going to be significant in, um, information, I was about to say energy, geez, specific uh, information she's going to hold on to, because later on, like, once again, I think, well, now, I think this kind of removes it from the board, potentially, the whole situation of them, the cops, kind of inadvertently using her to get to the inside of Paula's gang, Maybe, but it just seems unlikely now that, you know, jumping ahead a little bit, she's out, you know, so we'll see. But uh, I think maybe eventually the drugs are going to pop up into it. Like, she's going to be out and about or something and then feels the drugs. Or maybe she could help the cops and it's going to reduce her situation. It's like, I don't know if you can do something like that. Like, right, if you're on bail and you help the cops out afterwards, like an investigation, like, you know, there's a plea deal type of situation. I'm curious, could you lessen your sentence even more? Um, or at least get some charges dropped against you if you helped out the cops. Like, would they be willing to drop certain charges if it means that they can um, 
get you to help them in some shape or form. So that's why I'm wondering, like, will she be able to cut some deal afterwards? I You always hear about the plea deals and stuff beforehand, so I don't know if that's something that could even, like, if the groundwork could be laid for something to help reduce her situation um, post all of this. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not like she's actually, she's been arrested and she's going to go to trial, but she hasn't actually been found guilty. So this still might be in that window. I think it still would count as, yeah, there's still enough window and room now that I'm sitting here talking it out. Like, yeah, there's still enough room for her to strike a deal with them. So that still could play a, a role in uh, where the first episode had us like, you know, that, that fast forward to three months into the future. So that's still on the table. So we'll see. Um, the fact, once again, the fact is that Darnell's with her, like, maybe there's some correlation there, um, especially what his story ends up being, I think, we're, what we're setting up this season, so, but, um, Paula was like, yeah, cool, I'm happy about the drugs and everything, but, yeah, uh, and leaves, obviously Murphy's desperate, but it doesn't matter, uh, Sam ends up getting her later on because Sam's got her own little crew, you know, and then there's Paulus, but, uh, Sam ends up stabbing, uh, Murphy, and luckily she didn't get to finish the job because the guards came around, um, uh, I think the guards are only in, and probably not all, but some of the guards are in Paula's pocket, but not all, there probably aren't, well, no, there's at least some that are probably in Sam's pocket, but not much. There's probably one of the people who's not loyal to Sam or Paula that just happened to find Murphy, so. So she ends up in the infirmary, and the nurse is looking after her, trying to hook her up with a cane, but gives her a wooden cane, so it's like, cool, cool, that sucks, because she made a deal with Paula. Cool, I'll help you with your drugs, because Paula's shipment has kind of gotten, um, getting, sneaking drugs in has kind of been put on hold, because the entire prison has been, like, on lockdown, because Murphy got stabbed, it's like, right, someone got murdered super recently, and now you immediately have someone stabbed, like, the guards are kind of getting skewered for it, so it's like, yeah, they kind of have to be a lot more, like, well, there's no time to, there's, there's gonna be a heftier, like, um, crackdown on stuff, so... Paula has no choice but to go to Murphy. And Murphy was going to think she thought, right, I snoked drugs in for Max back in, was that? Yeah, that's season two, using my hollowed out cane. So the same thing's got to work this time, too. Except, like I mentioned earlier, not a hollowed out cane, not a metal hollowed out cane. But, well, I say metal. Well, I'd assume that maybe it's not metal. Whatever the case may be, she doesn't have a hollowed out cane. She has a sturdy wood one, so no sneaking drugs into that, and um, the nurse gives her a Bible, which my thought immediately when Murphy had her, like, a light bulb, like, eureka moment, I was like, okay, so you're gonna sneak it in using, like, hollowed out Bibles or something, which Paula later on is like, do you think we hadn't thought about books? And, because I thought, like, right, she got introduced to the chapel last episode, so I was like, right, maybe use the, uh, you know, uh, using the uh, church and everything, and just kind of, like, uh, the hollowed out Bibles as a means, but it seems like, no, all books are off the table, but she, then Murphy was like, no, audio, um, audio books, and I'm like, oh, interesting, because I didn't know that, I guess I never really thought about it, because the only audio books I think about are, like, digital ones, so, like, it's, it never crossed my mind to think about, like, physical audio books, it never, I never crossed my mind to think about that, so now they're going to use those to sneak in, and it's like, right, they're not going to look too deeply into it, because it's, hey, it's poor blind Murphy, there's no way she'd have anything suspicious in her, um, audio books, so it's like, cool, but just when this was all going down, granted, Murphy didn't get the audio book herself, because they, they sent it to her cell, and I was like, oh, like, I guess no one bothered to look to see if she actually, um, if it was in her cell for her or whatever. I guess the guard was like, yeah, I had no idea what that's about. But hey, your bail got paid by your buddy. Like, yo, it's time for you to go. And she's so excited. But it's like, and I love it. She's leaving. She's like, tell my, my friend uh, the audio book never showed up. Because the whole thing is, if no one is no one's there to claim it, it's going to automatically get shipped back. So it's like, last thing you need is for that to get shipped back and then someone to find those drugs later on. That'd be a whole issue in itself. But she's like, please tell her, because she already made a deal with uh, Paula. It's like, yeah, if I don't do this for you, you, you can, you know, she's like, you know what will happen. It's like, yeah, you'll kill me. So once again, she's bound down this, been down this road, road before with Nia. Uh, but now it's like, 
Well, even on the inside, Paula still probably has connections on the outside. And, I mean, that's how she's getting drugs in, in in the first place. So she'll probably have someone tracked. She'll probably have her own Sam on the outside ready to kill Murphy when the time comes. You're like, oh, boy. Oh, this is going to be awkward. This is going to be complicated. But it's like, hey, Murphy's out. She's free. She's so excited. It's amazing. And then we see at the end, cool, the audiobook got per, uh, packaged up with her stuff. It's like, cool. So she has the drugs on her. Mmm, Paula's not going to be happy about that. The whole, I guess you'd have to sneak the drugs back in to give them to Paula. But obviously on the outside, they're investigating those drugs. So if you get caught with them and considering your current circumstances, that's going to blow up in your face. I'm curious, she's going to have to tell the others about what she was trying to do in order to protect herself from Sam and that whole situation She's going to find out next episode. I mean, not unless she sits on those drugs for a while. Um, I mean, that might be that that uh, audiobook thing might not come into play for a while. It might not be like it might be a while before she looks to her stuff and finds out about it. Or maybe someone else unpackages her stuff and she, they're like, oh, oh, what's this audiobook? And she's like, wait, what? So maybe that's how that would come about. Once again, we shall see. And speaking of the police investigation, um, they're trying to crack down on trying to find the person who's peddling all these drugs. And lo and behold, Josh is like, yo, we should keep an eye on uh, prisons because, hey, Nia ran drugs out of the prison. It's like, and Sarah's immediately like, oh, really? Are you going to spy on Murphy? Which, to be fair, he's obsessed. He's paranoid. But at the end of the day, he was super right. He he was watching Murphy, and he was like, yeah, I think Murphy's trying to sell drugs. But Gene and Sarah just like, God, Josh, you're so obsessed. It's like, he might be, but he was actually right. But uh, he was act at first, I was like, oh, man, are you actually heartbroken thinking that, oh, my God, Murphy might die? It's like, right. He hates Murphy, but that's also because he has conflicted feelings about her. It's like, this is someone that he legitimately fell in love with that used him and manipulated him. But now it's like, right, he wants her to suffer. He says all these terrible things. Like It's like, right. Because even Sarah asked him last episode, was like, do you want her to have the electric chair or something? He's like, no, he doesn't want her to die, but he wants her to suffer. Like he wants her to rot away. It's like, right, her dying is her getting off easy. It's like, there's some part of you that doesn't want her to die because you need her around, like, because of like, you need her around to hate, but also secretly still have feelings for to some weird extent. So, but he was super delighted when he found out that Murphy couldn't get a hollowed out cane. He's like, Ha, not this time, Murphy. And he was kind of excited, but it's like, yeah, he did jump, like I said, ran down there to prison, like telling the guards to do their job because Murphy can't die. So it's like, yeah, it, there's all kinds of complicated feelings stirring up inside of Josh with all of that. But it's like, yeah, the moment that he was like, I'm not going to watch Murphy hard cut me him spying on Murphy. It's like, of course he's going to do that. And even Gina's like, yeah, I'm going to need you to stop that because it's a liability because now it's going to add fuel to her case because it's going to be like, Oh, yeah, like, you might have been after her, but this gives him ammunition because it's like, right, Josh has been spying on her. He's obsessed with her. He's made it her per a personal vendetta to go against her because you can start adding in the fact is her and Josh were, are in a relationship. And that kind of I think that can take the whole relation, uh, the whole um, the whole uh, investigation, potentially the whole case might be tainted because of that, especially if evidence comes up about, because you know Josh is going to stop here. Now that you found out that Murphy's out of prison, they're going to be like, I told you guys something was up. Like, how did they get $200,000? We need to look into that. But obviously, they're busy looking at this case, and Kurt Murphy's one thing. They're like, doesn't matter. We got her dead to rights. We got all the evidence we need. So when it comes to trial, just leave her alone. But Josh isn't going to leave her alone. He's going to harass her, and that's probably going to get a restraining order against him. He's potentially going to get fired, all of which could end up tainting the case. It's, once again, just more ammunition Leslie can use to kind of rip the... Uh, the prosecutor's case apart, essentially, because the cops are going to, like, oh, the DA or the prosecutor, whatever the case may be, is going to rip their case apart because of uh, his actions. So, we'll see. But uh, that's immediately where my mind is with all of that. Uh, speaking of all of this, um, I'm curious if there's still kind of a bit of a thing where Gene has a thing for Sarah or not. I'm not 100% sure. Because he tried to give her a file, and she's like, yeah, this doesn't really work for me. Bye, and leaves. And he had this look like... I mean, there was something last season, obviously, that crossed a very inappropriate line, him being her boss and everything. But I don't know if that's still there to some extent. Well, I was surprised by, despite everything last season, Darnell and Sarah are still a thing. I'm sure that's going to be a well-kept secret, especially after, after, after everything last season, but still. 
that was quite a surprise. I'm, you know, but it's like, right. Once again, it's like, it's interesting how history works. It's because I brought it up last season, like, oh yeah, the whole you and Jules thing. And sadly how that ended, hopefully history doesn't repeat itself. It's like, well, you don't have to necessarily worry because you don't have your sister involved in this because Nia's the one that, um, well, it was different circumstances and obviously you were out of the game. So it's a, it's a completely different situation altogether. So nevertheless, uh, when it's all said and done, um, Darnell um, is trying, you know, now that he's out of the game, he tries to go back to a place that him and uh, Tyson used to go to all the time. And he, he had opened up to Sarah about it, that he had been thinking about Tyson a lot more recently because it's kind of messed up. I'm out of the game. I'm being able to live my life. But Tyson was never able to. And obviously he blames himself because it's like, right, I pulled you into that, you know. And so he um, was thinking about Tyson being like, oh, uh, he's like, yo, so how my mom doing? And Darnell couldn't say anything. I'm like, oh, have you not visited your aunt? <clears throat> I think maybe the I think maybe the last time Darnell might have seen her. Did he see her all back in season one? Maybe. I wonder does uh Tyson's mom know about the fact is that Murphy's the reason why um Tyson's case kinda got solved. I don't know if publicly that's ever really known about the whole Dean situation of it all like I don't know I don't remember how public and how that whole situation played out obviously once again I, I know he killed himself but I don't know like how much I don't remember what how that really played out like publicly of like the knowledge of because I know obviously Gene knew so it's probably like reports and everything so it's probably public knowledge I don't I don't think they talked about it much last season about the aftermath of all of that about like Dean and um him being responsible for killing Tyson and all that. Uh, but like I said, maybe it's just a public thing. So I'm wondering, does, she probably doesn't know that uh, Murphy's the one that ended up getting justice for, um, well, playing a role in Dean getting found out for being the one responsible. I mean, it was also hard, well, regardless. Uh, but Darnell goes to visit his aunt, but his aunt wants to have nothing to do with him. It's like, oh, you had the audacity to come here, talk about how you got out of the life, and you dragged my son into it, and now he's dead? Oh, yeah, no, I, you were nothing to me. Bounce. So it wasn't the happy reunion he was kind of hoping for. And he knew it wasn't going to be a happy reunion. That's why he never faced, that's why he never uh, came face to face with her in all this time, because he couldn't bring himself to come face to face with her. So, But ultimately, um, when Sarah came back to his place, or her place, um, and he was waiting outside, he ends up catching a look at her files, and obviously having having everything with Tyson in his mind currently, he knows, like, right, you don't want to go after these kids, you want to go after the person that's forcing these kids, and Sarah's like, yeah, I understand, but, because uh, basically Darnell's like, you want to look out for m the me of this case. Um, but she's like, right, that's what we're trying to do. So I was wondering, like, if Darnell could be a informant, um, considering, like, you know, kind of a, um, not an informant, but, um, a consultant, you know, very much like, um, like the mentalist or Lucifer in that regard of, like, playing that consultant type of role, or even psych, um, uh, which would, I guess would be a more apt, you know, well, because this is more of a comedy drama, that's more of the comedy drama. I mean, you know, Lucifer kind of uh, definitely fits in that mold as well. But regardless, uh, I, I was wondering, like, with his insight having been in that situation, he could end up giving Sarah the pointers she needs so they could make it official by making him a consultant. But I think that'd probably be a bumpy road. So I'm sure he's going to be looking into the files more and more and probably trying to make things up for Tyson. He's probably going to investigate things on his own. He's probably going to keep he's going to peek into Sarah's files, see what they know and try to figure it out. And he'll probably try to find the person and he'll try to give Sarah the information, which that in itself would be poisonous. Once again, like that would probably get thrown out in court or it'll be illegally gained information. Cause it's like, right. Someone looked at your files and they shouldn't have done that. And they use that information to track down someone. It could, I think it could be a slippery slope and it just depends on how that plays. I think it'd be an interesting approach. And I get the feeling like that might be why Darnell is, where he is with Murphy, like, Murphy's trying to get from underneath all of that, because now he's in Paula, now she's under Paula, but also, I'm sure for, uh, 
Darnell, it's his way to make up for the past. Every it's like right, uh, Tyson getting murdered and getting rid of drugs so that no other people have to end up like Tyson. And then you add in um, trying to probably help out Murphy, who who is a friend, you know. So probably all those elements probably is what lead to both of them being together at, at three months from now. Um, potentially doing a drug deal or maybe they're like undercover once again maybe there's a wire or something so we'll ultimately have to wait to see where all of this ends up taking us potentially going forward and, and you know uh, going we will we, all take us potentially as we go forward into the next episode is what i'm trying to say sorry i just jumbled that so much uh but really that's all i'm going to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and Goodbye.